Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'll show you how I made my All Pastel sketchbook. It has a protective layer in between each page because as you might know, blending oil pastels is so much fun, but you just wish it would stop as soon as you finish the painting. This protective layer in between each page helps you secure the painting. This one I haven't even fixated and it's working out very nicely. So first off, let's talk about the materials you will need. I do have some special bookbinding equipment, but I will always list alternatives for you and try to keep it as accessible as possible. Most importantly, you will need some paper. For the one I make today, I will use this simple pastel paper. Whatever paper you choose, there are truly only two important things. First off, it has to be acid free, otherwise it will react with your paint. And secondly, it should be textured rough paper because the more texture, the easier it is for your oil pastel paint to stick to the surface and for you to stack multiple layers of paint on top of each other. The paper you choose has to be twice the size of your final sketchbook paper size because we will fold it in half. Next to the paper, you will also need needle and yarn. Also something to pre-punch your sewing holes like an awl or a slim metal object like an old mechanical pencil. Just something you can apply pressure with. If you don't have anything, you can also simply use the needle and a metal object to help you push the needle through the paper. Then you'll also need a bit of thin cardboard, for example, the back of your paper pad or the back of an old wall calendar. It has to be at least the same size as your paper. We will also fold the cardboard in half. Therefore, my cardboard here on the back of my sketching paper is definitely too thick. And I am using this, uh, let me show you this very large, uh, it comes in very large sheets of thin cardboard. It's not even a millimeter. Of course, having only a cardboard as your cover doesn't look that pretty, so you have different options. If you want to paint it, you will need paint. If you want to use a decorative paper like I am, you will need a large sheet of decorative paper. That paper in turn has to be larger than your piece of cardboard. Of course, you will need something to place in between your sketchbook pages to protect your paintings. There are different terms that you should look for when choosing that in between paper. I use simple tissue wrapping paper because that also has all the properties you need. Most importantly, it should be anti-static. The static is actually what makes the paper rub off the pigment and smudge it. If you choose one of these, it should be fine. You'll also need something to cut like scissors or a scalpel and what is also handy is a paper clip. You can also use a clothes pack. Lastly, you'll need glue. I am using this version book binder glue. However, I recently found out that this special one contains plasticizer. So I'll not be using it in the future. If you only have normal glue, then what is important for you is to let everything dry fully and let it dry under pressure. That way the probability of it sticking well is higher. Those are all the materials you need and now let's go on with the step-by-step -step tutorial. First off, take out your paper. Fold each page in half and make sure the fold has a nice edge to it. Maybe you'll have to cut your tissue wrapping paper to size, like I did. I do have a cutting machine, which is what I used. If you have a good stapler, emphasis on good, you can use that instead of sewing. I only have this tiny little guy, maybe I'll get a better one in the future, but I'll show you both ways. I'll explain the sewing way and the stapling way. If you want to staple, you can look at this timestamp and continue from there. Otherwise, we will need to pre-punch the sewing holes. We cannot sew through all of these paper sheets at once. It really is easier to pre-punch them but you need to make sure to pre-punch the exact same spot on every single paper sheet. 
To do so, we make a little blueprint for our pre-punched holes and we take out a sheet of paper. Mark where your page starts and ends. Now you can freestyle that. You just need to place three stitches, roughly a centimeter each, and make sure to note where the top and bottom of the paper is. You'll need to stay aware of that, otherwise your holes won't align. If you want to do so, freestyle it and then jump to this timestamp. If you want to measure it correctly, however, mark one centimeter away from each edge. Here is where we place our first stitch, again roughly a centimeter. Now we measure the in-between and subtract one centimeter for the remaining center stitch. Divide the rest by two, that is where your final two marks for the center stitch come from each side. This piece of paper is very important because, as I said, this is the blueprint for every single sheet you will pre-punch now. If you don't have something you can pre-punch more than one page with, you will need to do each individually. I have an awl and will punch in two batches. One batch is the paper, the other one is the tissue wrapping paper. Align your blueprint with the paper edge, maybe use a cl clip or clothes pack to hold the papers in place. Lay an old piece of clothing or thick cardboard beneath it so that you don't punch the needle in your surface below. Punch the holes in every paper as much as possible in the fold crease. When you finish punching the holes, make sure your paper is in the right order. So alternate between a sheet of sketchbook paper and a sheet of glycerin or tissue wrapping paper. Fold it in half and make sure once more that everything is in the correct order. You'll notice that your paper won't have a nice edge to it, simply because the more paper you stack inside other paper, the farther it will stick out. You can use a cutting machine and mess it up to clean up the edges or, as I am then doing to correct it, use a cutting mat and a scalpel. Just go over the edge several times, cut one layer of paper each time and if possible use a metal ruler or something that you can't easily cut into. Now let's talk about making the book cover. Measure how large your paper is now. Then add half a centimeter to the height as well as one centimeter to the width of your paper. Don't forget that the cover needs to cover both the front and the back, so we take twice the width. Add everything together and cut out the according piece out of your cardboard. Because the paper will likely rip in our cardboard when we try to fold it, our goal is to help it crease and you can do so by either making a very light cut in the paper or use something heavy to dent the paper inwards. It'll still likely rip a bit, but that is okay because we are covering it, in this case, with some decorative paper. Or you can simply paint over it. If you want to paint it, now is the time to do so. However you want to decorate your cover, you should have it decorated before you go on to the next step of sewing it. Now, I recently made this oil pastel painting and took a photo of it because I wanted to have it be a cover of my calendar and that worked out nicely but the sketchbook I'm working on is a bit smaller which is perfect because before I had the right size I made one that was accidentally a bit too small and that's now the perfect size to be the book cover. Sometimes it just works out you know. However whatever decorative paper you want to use you want to make sure that there is Best case scenario, three centimeters on every side, top, bottom, left, right, overlap. That way the cover looks the best, but really as long as you can glue it over the edge, it's fine. Now we will need the glue and we glue the cardboard onto our decorative paper. Try to keep it center, maybe make some marks beforehand so that it isn't lopsided. Take a flat and definitely not sharp object 
if possible, something rubbery to apply pressure. That's how we make sure that there are no air bubbles underneath the paper and help the glue connect these two materials. Then we want to cut off the edges in a 45 degree angle and leave a tiny bit of space from our corner. The paper still has to wrap around the corner. We start with the long edges and apply glue onto them. Before we fold it over, just run your finger along the edge to make sure the paper is touching the cardboard. Do the same thing for the short edges. If you don't have heavy duty glue, now is the time to let it dry underneath something flat and heavy. Depending on the glue, everything between one hour and overnight is good. Now, the final step is to connect our paper with the cover. To do so, use your blueprint and punch holes through the fold of your cover. Now take out needle and yarn, try to use twine. We start at the bottom and go inwards. Leave a bit of a tail because we have to make a knot when we are finished there. Whenever you encounter a hole just go through there with your needle and you should end up at the top of the cover. We will do the exact same thing downwards, always on the opposite side. That way we will end up with the thread at the bottom again. Make sure that the thread is tight and then do a double or triple knot as close to the spine of the book as possible. We really don't want any room of movement for the book and the thread. Now you take your stapler and open it up so that you can staple without the lower half. And you will make three staples exactly along the edge of your book's spine. To make sure the staples are secure, you turn it around, take something flat and metallic or something you can apply pressure with, like for example a pair of scissors, and really make sure that your little staple needles are settled in the paper. And then you should be able to just fold it up and have a little sketchbook. That is it! We will leave it under something heavy again. I do have this homemade book press and I'll put it away overnight and see how it looks in the morning. It is the next day and let's have a look at how this turned out. Hey stranger, look my way and you're new in town. I'm wondering your name and I'm guessing that it's real pretty and then some. Hey stranger, look my way. The coffee wasn't great, but I'll stay anyway and come back tomorrow and order another one because. So there you have it. A tutorial on how to make your own oil pastel sketchbook. Please let me know how this went for you and if you are on Instagram, please feel free to tag me in whatever you have created. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and also let me know in the comments what else you want to see. I always love your thoughts and suggestions. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!